Hi, I'm Lauren Bregesser, and I'm gonna show you how to automate parameters in Ableton Live. So automation can be applied to clips in the session view and in the arrangement view. So I'm gonna start off with automating parameters in the clip view, in the session view here. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I just have this four bar loop here. And I have this synth here, and I wanna automate this parameter up and down. So an easy way to do that is to manually draw it in. I'll show you how to record it in here in just a little bit. So you can manually draw it in. So I'm gonna hit shift tab and I wanna make sure that I'm looking at the automation envelope. So this in live 11 is a little bit different than 10, but this second, this middle tab here brings you to the envelope. And so I can see, if I can click here, this shows me which device I'm automating. It can be the mixer, so if I want to automate the volume or panning or mutes, I can do that. Um, but I want to automate the wavetable. And if I click on here, I can see all the different parameters of the wavetable that I can automate. Now, this is intimidating because it's, it's a lot to search for because you can automate almost everything in Ableton Live. So what I'm going to do as a quick shortcut is I'm going to hit Shift Tab, go to my instrument. I'm going to click on this filter, this cutoff frequency of the filter in wavetable here. So if I click on that and I hit shift tab again, that automatically selects that parameter there. So the envelope I'm looking at is that cutoff frequency of that filter. So I can see this red dashed line going through this clip, this four bar clip here. That means there's no automation on it. So I can freely adjust it as I want. Now, once I add automation data, it'll turn to a solid line. So in order to, I want to automate it so it opens and closes. So to do this, I'm going to make sure that I'm not on the pencil tool like this, but I'm on the regular selector tool. So I can hit the B key to toggle that, make sure I'm just the regular selector tool. I'm going to click on here, put a point in the middle and make sure to put a point at the ends. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these down to maybe about hundred Hertz. And you can click on these boxes if you want and just manually enter that in. But uh, I'm going to drag this up to about one kilohertz or maybe we'll, we'll, we'll open it up. <clears throat> so now for four bars, it's, the filter is going to uh, open up over two bars and close down over two bars. So let's listen to that. That's cool. So let's look at it on the device here. So the one thing you'll see is that the cutoff frequency now has an orange dot, meaning there's an uh, automation envelope attached to it. So you can watch it move in real time here. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Now, one thing that you can do, even though we have like a straight line, if I want to make it curved, I can just hold down the option key on a Mac here and drag this down and create a curve there so it's more uh, exponential rather than linear. So now let's hear that. So it's a little more dramatic that way. Now, if I wanna get rid of a point, you can just double click and get rid of that automation point and sort of you know, draw in what you want. Now, um, another thing that you can do to mainly draw this in is go over here and click on B. You can use the pencil tool this time. And you can just drag and draw that in the way you want it to be. Now, when I do that, you can see it goes in these little steps, which may be sonically cool or not what you want at all. So I'm going to hit Command-Z and undo that. So what I want to do is right-click in here or right-click inside here and turn my fixed grid to off because it puts those uh, different steps however the grid goes. So if I turn that fixed grid off, I can just freehand draw that in there, just up and down. And now we can listen to it. And you can get a little bit crazy with it.
And if I want to clear that, I just right click and clear that envelope. So that works pretty well. Next thing I'm going to do is record that in manually. So I'm going to hit shift tab. So I've got that envelope gone. So now the orange dot is not here on the frequency. Let's bring the frequency down to 100. That seems like a good starting point. And I can record that in there. So in order to record that into that clip view, I'm going to hit record on that track. And then next thing I'm going to do is actually double check, check my uh, count off settings because it could give me a count off when I actually record in there. Click here. I guess the count off count in is set for two bars. So I'm gonna have two bar count on, and then it's gonna start recording my, my moves on that knob. So now what I'm looking to do is click this this record, this circle, this hollow circle icon, almost dead center in the upper part of Ableton Live. So when I click that, that's my overdub button for automation data. So I click there, and I start moving it. Let go of it now. And it's going to continue playing that. Let me hit shift tab so you can see. So this is my recorded data in there. And that works out pretty well. Um, so that's one way of automating it. So another thing you can do with automation I'm going to show you here in a second is say I have this drum beat here. This is just from the uh, synthwave pack. Uh, it's it's two bars here. Come on. And say I want to do a big low pass filter so I cut off the highs over the course of four bars. It's tricky because the bar because this drum loop is two bars. What you can do is I'll show you here in a second something really really cool. Let me go to audio effects and go to my auto filter. I'm just going to drop that on that track. So I have this auto filter here, and what I want to automate is this filter frequency up and down. I may want to draw it in there. So I hit shift tab. If I want to filter that over the course of four bars and my loop is only two bars, you can actually separate out the loop of the automation envelope versus the actual loop of the MIDI data. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this automation envelope tab here. And you see this linked loop right here. If I click that, it show, it, it, I can unlink that loop, meaning I can make the loop of this to be four bars. So I can change the length down here to four bars. So my automation is four bars long, even though the MIDI data for the loop is two bars long, which is pretty cool that you can do that really easily. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to automate that, that parameter. I think it's the last thing I touched, but I'll just go double check. I'm going to click on that filter frequency. So what I'm going to do is put an automation point here, turn off my pencil tool, put an automation point at the top, put an automation point at the end, and then have that auto have that you know close down after two bars. So let's listen to that. And this is different for every parameter you automate. So I can have a four bar filter sweep and I can actually change, have a like one bar resonance loop, that kind of thing. So that's automation in there. So uh, another thing that you may want to do is automate the mixer. So I'll just show you that really quick. Uh, back to this four bar loop here. Say I want to automate this send that's going to this reverb. Now, if I manually want to draw that in, um, I can do that. See, so it's the last thing I touched. So you can automate the mixer or any of the devices that you have in there. So I'm just going to click on automation, uh, mixer, uh, send A. And so now I'm just going to draw that in. 
So I can just have it uh, put a point here, put a point in the middle, put a point at the end, and turn it all the way up. Let's open up even more. Now you can automate volumes that way. So you can see again, this has the, the orange red dot next to it. Let me clear that auto, uh, automation parameter there. Um, now, one trick I'll show you here is that I have this utility device. A lot of times if I want to automate volume or panning, but I still want to have like this fine tuning adjustment of bringing that fader up and down, a lot of times what I'll use is this utility device. And if I want to automate the panning, I can do that or the stereo width, I guess, the panning down here or the levels here, I can automate this rather than that fader itself. So you still have a secondary control of the overall level, even if you automate it with that. Um, so I'll show you just, just automating that panning there. So I touch that pan knob, hit shift tab. So rather than using the, the balance knob here, I'm gonna go in and use that balance knob on the utility. So I can go in and uh, let's change my grid to, um, half notes so so you can see the dashes have changed so now my points are going to snap to these half notes here let's bring this up bring this up so i'm gonna have these moving around here Bring this all the way up. So now I'll have a panning thing going on like this. So you can see that pan now move left and right. So almost everything in Ableton Live can be uh, automated. Now, when I'm making tracks, oftentimes I'll, if I have a synth sound uh, and I'm using wavetable, I'll automate this parameter here. I'll do some subtle filter. Even if it's not a big sweeping filter change, I'll do some filter adjustments just to kind of make it more, um, less static and more dynamic and more and less repetitive, just these subtle constant changes to your sounds. So that's very easy. So that's how you automate data automate information in session view with these different clips. So thank you. And I'll show you a little bit later on how to automate in the arrangement view.